Developers creating custom Microsoft Teams meeting apps can implement different experiences for meeting participants, depending on the participant's role in the meeting and the life cycle of that meeting. So in this section, we're gonna learn how to use the Microsoft Teams SDK to determine the current meeting life cycle stage of the meeting and the participant's role to present the context aware experiences to each user. So specifically, we're gonna look at how to determine the current meeting life cycle, how to determine the current meeting context and the current meeting attendees role. We'll start with determining the current meeting life cycle. Developers can conditionally show different content in a custom meeting app based on the current life cycle of the meeting. Now the different life cycle options include the pre-meeting experience, which is, the, which is shown in the meeting details as a tab before the meeting starts or concludes, the end meeting uh, life cycle, which is this experience is shown in the meeting's side panel or stage as a tab when a meeting is in process. And then the post meeting experience is shown in the meeting details as a tab after the meeting starts or concludes. Now the end meeting life cycle is only implemented in the meeting's side panel and or the meeting stage, as those are only available when a meeting is currently in process. However, the pre-meeting and the post-meeting experiences are determined by checking the time of the meeting. For example, uh, to display one experience for the pre-meeting life cycle of the meeting and another for the post-meeting experience life cycle uh, of the meeting, it, you can use the start time of the meeting as a break point between the two. Or you could do something um, where you're doing some sort of a check uh, to figure this out uh, with code. So here's the code option of how you can do this. So what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the current start date time um, of the meeting. And what I'm doing a check for is I'm checking to see if that if the time, the current start or the start time of the meeting, if it's prior to right now, then I wanna display the pre-meeting experience. Otherwise, I wanna show a post-meeting experience. So that way, if someone wants to go look at the details, I can say that if the meeting has not started, then I want you to to see one experience. Otherwise, if the meeting has started or if the meeting has, uh, has um, well, if it has started, then I wanna show the post-meeting experience. You could obviously do different things as well. You could say, you could use the end uh, time of the meeting as your break point. Or you could even have a different experience to show when the meeting was currently in process. Um, if somebody wanted to view the details of the meeting without actually joining the meeting and they wanna have a different experience. As you can see here, you've got full control over what you do. There's no property on the SDK that tells you if you're in the pre-meeting or post-meeting or in-meeting uh, process. You're gonna figure this out on your own uh, based on um, the current time uh, and using the properties that are exposed by the meeting itself. Now let's talk about the meeting context. Now developers can conditionally show different content in custom meeting apps based on the current context where the tab has been loaded. Now meeting apps can be rendered in the following different locations. In the content section, this is the main area of a meeting where like the details and the files tabs are found. And this is commonly used for the pre and post meeting experience. The side panel is always available when the user has joined the meeting of a meeting that's currently in process. Now, this enables developers to implement an experience that's targeted to the currently signed in user. In the side panel, that's gonna occupy the same location where the meeting chat is located or the participant list is displayed as well. And the stage is the main presentation area of a meeting. So this is where presentations and screen sharing are displayed during a meeting. So using the stage, your meeting app a developer can create an experience that's presented to all the attendees in a meeting, and we're gonna do that in our demo. Now the current meeting context is available to developers using the Microsoft Teams context object, and that's passed into the custom app. The context object contains a property of the frame context, and that's set to one of three different values for meeting apps. Now the Yeoman generator for Microsoft Teams includes an NPM package called the MS Teams React Base Component Package, and that contains a React hook called Use Teams. You can see that on the second line here on this code. Now that's based on the Microsoft Teams JavaScript SDK. So in your meeting app tab, you can use this React hook to get the current tabs, uh, the, the current tabs context. 
So I have the standard React, uh, React um, hooks of use state and use effect. I've created a custom hook here. I'm using a, a custom hook that's been provided to me called use teams. And I'm going to use that a couple lines down in a state where I'm setting my state. So I've got a property called is uh, in teams or is teams, sorry, in teams. And then I'm also passing in the context. I'm also getting some other values too. Like I have a state value here for the meeting ID and also for the frame context. Now the frame context is telling me where I am uh, in Microsoft Teams. So I can use the React hook use effect to execute whenever the context object is set by my use Teams hook. And you can see that there at the bottom. So when the context property changes, my use effect is gonna, hook is gonna fire and I can check to see if the context is defined, I can then go get the meeting ID from the context and the frame context and set those two different state values. Now, my tab, uh, my meeting tab, or my meeting app, his, the tab can then use the frame context state object to conditionally return different user experiences based on where the tab is loaded. So in this case here, what you can see is I've got a switch statement and it's checking the frame context and it's saying, if I'm currently in the content uh, state of my meeting, then I want to show the pre-meeting user experience. Now, in this case here, I probably want to do some additional checks to see if I'm in the pre-meeting or post-meeting lifecycle. But for simplicity of this code, you see here on the third line, I'm just saying that if we're in the main tab of our meeting, uh, in the main context of the meeting itself, which is where you would normally do all the scheduling and where you see the details of the meeting and, and, and file attachments, um, this is where my tab's gonna live, and so I'm gonna show just the pre-meeting experience. I'm also checking to see if we're in a side panel experience, and if we are, then I'm getting a different user experience. Or if I'm in the meeting stage experience, then I'm gonna get the meeting stage experience and display that. So I have a couple different ways of actually displaying this. Now let's talk about de um, determining the current meeting attendees um, role. Now, developers can conditionally show uh, different content in a custom meeting app based on the role of the current user. Now, your app could show one experience and provide some capabilities to meeting organizers while other meeting attendees receive different experiences. Um, and we're going to do this in our demo in just a few minutes. So again, we have three different uh, options. We have an organizer, a presenter, and an attendee. So one way to do this is using a React hook as the other previous examples have done that I've already shown you. So in this example, the online meeting state property is set after retrieving the details of a current meeting using the Microsoft Graph. The online meeting type is one of the types coming from the Microsoft Graph type package. Um, that's the at Microsoft slash Microsoft dash graph dash types package. Now, using a React hook, you can set the current user is organizer in this where I have this um, uh, property I'm, I'm gonna define where I have, and well, in this case here, it just has the uh, is organizer as the third state property. Um, and I can set that property when two other state properties change. So in this case here, when the user ID changes and when the online meeting changes, I want to do a check to see, do I, is the meeting, is the online meeting set and is the user ID set? And if it is, let's go try and see if the current user ID matches a user in our online meeting, or there is in the um, specifically in the um, the organizer of the online meetings. There's only going to be one organizer, and if it is, then I set the organizer state value to true. Otherwise, I set it to false. Now, my meeting apps tab could then use this state property flag to do things like disable controls for attendees who aren't the meeting organizers. And again, we'll see this uh, in our demo in just a moment. 